Well, as an outsider in the belly of the beast here, this is uh, unconscionable. Any other business would already be called in by their banks and so forth, but this is our fourth month of this fiscal year, to put it in perspective. And the other thing is that I want to remind your viewers that uh, this is all about about $300 billion of appropriated funding for the discretionary side of our budget, which is about $1.3 trillion. We spend over $4 trillion, so this whole shutdown that we're talking about is over less than 10% of our total federal spending for a year. And we stayed here in August last year and got to 75% of our discretionary budget. As bad as that is, that's the first time in 22 years that even happened. So this is a broken process here. People in America ought to be outraged that we're sitting here four months into this fiscal year. And let me remind you of one other thing, Joe. We only have about 60 to 70 working days left in this fiscal year to get ready for 2020 in terms of the funding. So I'm not betting heavily that we're going to get the funding done for 2020. So we'll be right back here next year doing exactly this unless we change the way we fund the government. Well, and, and in this case, uh, Senator, it's about border security, but you can imagine that uh, it could be about, I mean, take your pick. I mean, the Republican, there was something about Obamacare that, that caused it. And it, when you hold the government as a, uh, you know, opening it up as, as the, the gambit in, uh, for your own pet project, in this case, it's, it's immigration. I guess there's a lot of people that think while it's important, it doesn't have to be solved right now with people not getting paychecks. Well, let's put that in perspective. I mean, right now we have over 750,000 people entering this country illegally every year. And to put that in perspective, we bring in 1.1 million legal immigrants a year. So this is a national security crisis. And it only heightens your point, the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party. Just last year, 44 Democratic senators voted to fund border security at $25 billion. Now we've got a situation where they won't give 1.6, which is what we thought the deal was the week before Christmas, and Senator Schumer backed up from that deal. So this is the second time Senator Schumer has actually shut the government down over this issue. And so what I'm looking at right now is for everybody involved to be the adult in the room, and let's get this thing done. So Senator, We're you began this conversation, though, by saying that it was a disgrace, effectively, that the government has been shut down for as long as it has. Why not reopen it? have this conversation. I think there is a meaningful uh, and very fair and important conversation to be had about border security in this country. And I think both sides agree to that. I, I think the question is, who's trying to use what leverage over each other at this point? Andrew, you're exactly right. But let's put it in perspective. Had we had that conversation in August or September of last year, I would agree with you. But right now, what the Democrats are saying is, look, give us what we want, and then maybe we'll come back later in two or three months and talk about what you want. That's not the way negotiations work in the real world. I think all the, uh, but my understanding is that what the Democrats want is just to open the government. Well, I understand that. But then where's the leverage for the president in terms of getting them to move on the issue of the day? It's just like Joe just said. It could be immigration today, next year, who knows what it'll be. And but so the point you, is, this, the point your, is, this is, this is totally your, irresponsible by both parties, frankly, that this is right. being done in January, not in September of well, last what, year. What do you tell your constituents who are federal workers uh, in, your, in your own state who are not getting paychecks right now? Well, they're citizens of the United States first, and right now we have a national security crisis. This president is the first president in the last five that basically is standing up and going to the mat to defend America. I mean, this is what this is at stake here. No matter what the left is saying right now, by all measures, this is a national security crisis. That's what I tell my people back home. Do you... Um I mean, Senator, I, I mean, it's we, we see exactly what's happening. I know you do, too. I mean, when, when the president gave that sound bite that it, you can call it the Trump shutdown, I mean, you know, I, I'm close enough to New York to have followed Senator Schumer's career. Uh, I, I know that he's just going to sit on that forever and never, you know, he, in his mind, he can continue to win in terms of public sentiment on whose fault the shutdown is. And... That's what kind of gets me and, and I think is hypocritical, because if, if Pelosi and Schumer really, really cared about the paychecks, they'd come back and do two billion or two and a half billion. Well, so. this is easy to solve. If we went back to the solution at 1.6 that the president was willing to take the week before Christmas, this would be done. Obviously, the Democrats believe they've got a political position. This is more right. important to them and, as an issue than it is a solution. people aren't stupid, Senator. They see that. That's, but, but neither side looks good. And, and you're just making everybody. You're going to, you know, government's going to have like a 5% approval rating when all this is through. And we even had Max Bacchus on who said, you know, a little people blame Trump a little bit more. But they, there is some blame going around both sides. I wonder if Sen do you think, do you think, 
Do you think Senator Schumer and Speaker Pelosi eventually will get to a point where they actually care about, uh, about whether they're being tarnished or not? Well, what I'm hearing from the Democratic senators is the same thing I hear from my Republican colleagues, and that is enough. It's time to get this done. So we're putting pressure on leadership right now to get involved and let's get this done. I agree with you on one thing. It's the reason I ran for the Senate back in 14, and that is the dysfunction in this town is unconscionable. It's unbelievable that we're sitting here trying to get this done four months into the fiscal year. I keep saying that because this is just untenable. This is time for everybody to step up past the self-interest, the political self-interest, and get this done. People in America expect that. Um, Senator, uh, real quick, uh, I know we got to go, but uh, Mark Warner is going to be on in just a moment. He has an op-ed in, in the Wall Street Journal today. He says this, he says, uh, 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 which, which, which uh, goes uh, to the opposite of what you were saying before. He says, Trump indicated before Christmas that he would sign a continuing resolution the Senate unanimously passed only to oppose the bill, leaving the majority leader holding the bag. He sent Mike Pence to the Hill to make an offer, then kneecapped the vice president by rejecting the proposal on national television. Later, he undercut an attempt at negotiation by a Senate whisperer, Lindsey Graham. Well, that's one perspective. I'll give you my perspective. And I was in more meetings than Senator Warner. I can tell you there was a $1.6 billion deal on the table, and Senator Schumer walked away from it.